Well, good morning, folks. Evening, night, whatever time you happen to be viewing this video. It's JP here, and I want to talk to you today about a couple of different things. But uh, let's kind of focus in on the video that I put out. Insane amount of bees marching to my hive box. Okay? Got a lot of questions about that video. A guy called me on a Monday. I get a call from him telling me holding on to the limit is pine tree since Friday. This was the swarm that I shook. Okay? And we'd gotten some rain. The bees were clustered. They were wet. Going through a lot. So, again, I'm heading to my job. And he told me the, the, the address and the street. I said, I'm actually a <laughs> block from you right now. En route to remove some bees out of this soffit right here. Decided to go ahead and, and try to deal with that swarm. I happen to have an extra nucleus hive with me, which this is a nucleus hive. I didn't have a sheet with me, anything like that. So I just put the nuke down on the, on the ground and I shook the swarm. Okay, it was, it was a good bit of bees, as you can see in the video here. It's a good size swarm. What made them run into that box? Well, they'd been sitting out in the open and getting rained on for, what was that, Saturday, Sunday, three days, two and a half days. That box had familiar scent, and that's what drew the bees into the box. Now, the queen obviously went in the box at some point. I didn't see her go in the box, but at some point she went in, because all the bees went in, and they stayed in that box until I was done with my job down the street. See this stuff right here? This is called propolis. All right, we also call that bee glue. Let me show you. Bees make this from tree sap and certain resins of flowers. And they will propolize the lid down to a domestic setup. They will propolize tight little gaps to keep air things like drafts, uh, light out of the hive. Say an animal gets in a hive and they kill it, they may go ahead and sequester that animal uh, with propolis. I've seen uh, rat and squirrel carcasses, bird carcasses that were inside of a hive and uh, where the bees propolized completely over it before. Bees have a really, really good sense of smell and they can smell this propolis. So when I shook those bees in front of that hive, Okay, they were going in because they can smell the propolis. So those are some of the main reasons why they marched into that box. You know, people ask me why they run in the hive. I don't know exactly why they run in the hive, but that reminds me of something that ants would do. Okay? And instead of them just flying right into the to the hive, a lot of times they'll just run in. You know, there was familiar scent. That that was it pretty much in a nutshell. And I guess also because they they had been through a lot. You know? So I guess it's, they were ready to, to, to get into something. To get out of the elements. So uh, right now, let's let's go ahead and take a look at this box. All right. This is a removal I did uh, a couple of weeks ago in Algiers, Louisiana. They didn't have a ton of bees. But uh, I looked at them the other day, and uh, I think they're ready for another box, actually. But we'll just go ahead and take a little peek in here and see what's happening. All right. So we're going to give them a little smoke. I believe this is called the Italian hive tool or J-hook. This is my preferred hive tool. We're going to go ahead in here 
break that propolis seal. All right. When we take this off, we also want to smoke them up top. Just, you know, keep them honest. Again, as I don't know if I mentioned in this video, but I don't think I did yet. But uh, we've uh, it's supposed to be raining right now. All right, I want to show you something. You see the bees on top? See, this is more propolis right here. Okay. So let me let me just show you. I'm going to bump this. You've seen me do this in my videos, but I'm going to go ahead and bump this lid, and you'll watch these bees just kind of run in. But I'm going to give them a little bump. All right. See now they're all off the lid pretty much. See them running in. Give these a little puff. They hadn't really done too much on this frame right here. Right? But they've actually made more progress since uh, I went in the other day. See some pretty white comb. They started to grow out. Added a little honey to it. Okay. See the open cells. Now if I shook this, I'm not sure if the honey would fling out or not, but that's an indicator that the, the honey hadn't been cured yet, that the nectar hadn't been brought down to an acceptable level, which is usually, usually below 20%. And that's, I've said this before, where fer fermentation starts as well. Okay, so these are very smart little critters. So they'll bring that moisture content down below 20%. And then they'll cap the cells with beeswax, and I'll, I'll be able to show you some of that capped uh, honey in a minute. And it's kind of like putting honey in a jar and putting a lid on it. Okay, it'll keep like that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I need to put this aside. So what I'll do is I'll find a corner that it doesn't have any bees on it, and I can bump these as well. So I'm going to use this corner. And we're just going to bump these. See that? You didn't catch that little bump, but uh, I'll bump the next frame so you can see what I'm talking about. Pull this next one. That's just to get them to move over. And I can already see a bunch of honey on this one. That's not capped as well. There's a little bit up here that's capped. I'll show you. See right here. The stuff up here is capped. So that's cured. Which means the stuff around it's probably cured as well. Okay. And this is plastic cell. This is wax plastic cell. Some people are not a fan of plastics, but uh, I find them. As long as that foundation is waxed properly, they will draw it out. They will work it. Okay, and it, it's in some ways it's a lot more user friendly using either sheets of foundation, whether they be wax coated or uh, wax foundation. In my opinion, a lot of times it makes your life a lot easier than just using the foundationless frames. With foundationless frames, they have a tendency to cross comb. And uh, you know, not always, but a, a good part of the time they will cross comb and, and you'll have a mess on your hands. And when you're trying to pull your frames to inspect them, you know, you, you really can't do it. You, you're constantly having to, to redirect their efforts. And you can, you can see these bees actually don't do a lot of propolizing. Okay. I've uh, worked hives before where you needed that hive tool to, to break the seal. My buddy Bud Watt in Macon, Mississippi, we had uh, eight annual uh, get-togethers, or nine, somewhere in there, and uh, his bees propolized ungodly. Uh, it, took, it took three of us one time, I think it was 20 minutes, to take a top cover off one of his hives. It was gummed up that severely. Let's pull this frame. A lot of cat brood. I see some shiny honey in there as well. I don't see the queen. There's a decent little bit of honey. You can 
see this cat brood on here. Okay. So it looks to me like they definitely need some more room. That's pretty obvious. Or uh, they're going to start backfilling some of the available cells that the queen would normally lay eggs in. You, know, you always want to give them something to do, keep them busy. Or they can get congested and try to swarm on you. Alright, let's put this one back in. We want to be gentle when we, when we come down with that. Alright. Now this next frame just might have the queen on it. Alright. Let's see here. Okay. Let's see her yet. Maybe she's on that next one. <laughs> That's a good bit of uh, cat brood on there. See a little bit of honey at the very top, okay? All right. It's a decent frame. I don't see any drone brood. No queen, queen cups, anything like that. But they do need some more room, so we've caught them. Uh, at the right time, okay? You know, once they start making queen cups, they may have decided to want to swarm on you, okay? So you want to stay ahead of the game. All right, so let's put this back. Again, nice and easy. All right. Let's pull that last frame. Unless she's on the, the bottom board or the side wall she should be on this frame obviously this is the last one we're pulling don't see her yet see. there she is okay she's uh she's not a real big queen italian looking girl pretty typical fly area all right so, we're not going to add that box today, but in the next day or two, I'm going to go ahead and add another box. Give them some more room. But a nice, fun little inspection. And she's chilling. They're, they're happy. Obviously, they're happy bees. And we, we do have inclement weather coming. If you believe the hype, these bees should be really pissy right now, huh? Boy, I wish I could show you that just now, folks. I don't know if you caught that bee I just touched. But that bee was taking a nap. I kid you not. Okay, they don't sleep like we do. But they do take little mini naps here and there. You know, they, they, that bee looked like it was just dead. Alright, and I went to touch her to see if she was dead or not. And, uh, and she moved. Mark my words, that bee right there was taking a little power nap. Okay? They will do that. Seen it many times before. <laughs> you always get the, the same response, you know. It's like it's like waking up your wife, you know. Hey, honey, boo, she jumps up like that, or she might hit you. You know, you gotta be careful with that. But anyway, uh, a lot of times when you <laughs> when you touch that bee that's uh, motionless, she just kind of stop moving like that. It's uh, <laughs> it's kind of comical. At least I think so. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and pull our frames back and uh, let them touch. Always want to observe proper bee space. That space in between the comb sections is what we call bee space. All right. All right. That over. Be careful you don't squish nobody. All right. Go ahead and put that one back in place. So they, they really hadn't started drawing this out too much yet. And so, uh, and, and this side they just started on. So, uh, but I'm still going to give them another, another box. The rule of thumb is once they've drawn out about 80% of the frames in your box, it's time to add 
another box. Hope y'all enjoyed this little video. Another one from JP the B-Man. I hope y'all having a great day. And until the next one, y'all take care now. Bye-bye.